Good morning, this is Mr. Riley. Uh, I'll be lecturing on CISD 2601, Chapter 6. So let me go ahead and pull this up. Okay, we're going to talk about group policy control in Microsoft Windows. So group policies and GPOs. Windows group policy is a centralized location for settings. Now, that would be in a domain environment and you would have to have all the computers joined to the domain. Defines and applies general and security configurations changes to one or more computers. So you can actually set up, you can push out changes to multiple computers at once or individual computers. Collection of group policy settings can be stored in a named object called group policy objects and it's a container in Active Directory. So we have one administrator action. He sets, he creates a new policy and sets up a group policy and pushes it out to act with Active Directory to many users or many desktops and servers. You can do either one. So some of the settings you can do, this is just a small sampling. There's thousands of settings, password policy requirements for how long the password is, how often it changes, how often you can change your password and where it's stored. Lockout policy, if you, how many bad logout attempts you have. Kerberos policy, the lifetime for Kerberos tickets and clock synchronization. Uh, tickets would be your security access tokens. Audit policy defines events and records audit files. So it will, you can actually push out auditing to all your PCs. User write assignments, if you can use the USB port, can you log out in certain times and stuff like that? Can you use the DVD drive? Security options defines what security related actions users can perform, allowed to format a check removal media, require smart card, etc. And continued uh, event log, how large they can get, how long you keep retention settings, guest access settings to event logs if you want to restrict that, which you probably do. Restricted groups, list of users and security sensitive groups to what other users the restricted groups can belong. So what you can do is if people start getting put into a, rest a restricted or security sensitive group like local administrator, you can clear those out every 90 minutes and put the people you want in there. System services define startup mode and access permissions for system services. Registry defines access permissions and audit settings for registry keys. File system defines access permissions and discretionary access control lists and audit settings for system access control list. Okay, linking. Now you can create a GP, uh, a group policy object, but unless you link it, it doesn't go into effect. Can link GPOs to specific users to customize settings for groups or individual users. Users who log on anywhere in Active Directory domain gets a GPO's link to their user account. So if you created a GPO and it linked it to my account, anytime I logged in, no matter what computer in the domain, it would apply to me can also link GPOs to organizational units. You must link a GPO to at least one computer, domain, or OU to have it go into effect, either that or it's just in storage. Making group policies conform to your security policy. Now this is where you get the guidance on what settings to do. GPOs you define, you, you should conform to your security policy reasons to allow management to meet security responsibilities, you know, to ensure that there are no gaps in your security policy and your policy doesn't contain additional controls. Also, it adds consistency because if I send, you know, PC repair people out there to set up all these policies, there are going to be mistakes. If you do it with Active Directory, it'll be consistent across the whole, the whole environment. Security responsibility management must ensure the security of an organization's assets, including information, all actions IT security personnel to take, all actions IT security personnel take to secure information occur within the authority granted by management. So you don't make up the rules. Management creates a security policy, you enforce it. IT security controls, IT security controls that exceed management security goals are also exceed granted authority. So don't overstep your boundaries. Group policy definitions should satisfy security goals and not add arbitrary controls. 
primary goals for designing group policy should be to ensure group policy does not leave any gaps in the security policy. When environment group policy conform to security policy creates a validation security policy. So when you're working in together, you're basically supporting security policy and that's your job. If you see additional controls needed, then you need to talk to management about updating security policy. Making group policy conform three-step process, examine the list of GPO settings that are already exist in the default Windows template. There are two default GPOs, domain, default domain policy and default domain controller policy. Check those, see if some, some of those settings are already in place. If they are fine, then just build on from there. Identify any elements in your security policy that do not already exist in default Windows templates. Create a new GPO for each remaining goal in your security temp policy that you identified in the second step. Now, how do these work? At first, when you turn on your machine, you have your local GPO. It applies your local group policy objects. And then it'll talk to the site, which is your basically your local area network, and it will apply to any site GPOs you may have. Now, if there's any conflict, the site will win out. And then it'll talk to the domain, any GPOs for the domain, it will apply those. If there's any conflict, the domain will win out over the site. And then it'll push it down to the organizational units and they'll apply those GPOs. And if there's any conflict, the OU GPOs will override the domain. So the last one, red, is, a, is the winner. Types of GPOs in the registry. The registry is a database in Windows that stores configuration settings for the computer and users. Stores group policies settings in the H key current user or H key local machine. So user, whoever you, logs on, will apply those users' registry settings. And then the local machine will apply to anybody who logs on. In your, so kind of the bottom line, why do they bring this up? Anything you do in group policies changes the registry. It's better to do it through GPOs than to go into the registry and change it in there because that is a very difficult interface to work with. Local group policy editor. So this is this will apply to your local machine. You have computer configuration and user configuration. And each one of those have three nodes, software settings, Windows settings, administrative templates, and both. Now, if you apply it to computer, computer configuration, it changes computer configurations for all anybody who logs on that computer. User configuration, it depends on who logs on. Okay, so in this example, desktop gadgets, you went in there, and it's basically turning that off. Turn off user installed gadgets. And if you go into here, actually group policy object, Windows sidebar, and you can see that. In changing this GPO, it affected the registry. Types of GPOs in Active Directory, defining GPOs in Active Directory lets you centralize security rules and control how Windows applies each rule. Create an Active Directory GPO on the domain controller using group policy management console. And you'll do this in your labs. You'll actually create GPOs. In the group policy management console, you can perform the following things. You can create and edit GPOs, import and export. So you create one, you can export it to a friend or import a good one that they may have. Copy and paste them. Back up and restore because if you, you can work quite hard on these and you probably want to back them up. Search for GPOs and create reports also. And here's what the Group Policy Management Console looks like. Uh, all your group policy objects are actually stored underneath this container here. And those are your two default ones, default domain controller and default domain policy. And they had you create a password GPO. And here you see there, you see security filtering, who's allowed to read it, is any authenticated user, anybody allowed to log on. And you see multiple tabs here, settings, status, delegation. And you can actually 
change some of this. So like say you don't want all authenticated users this to apply to, you can click add, put in like a group of users and remove authenticated users, do some security filtering. GPOs on domain controllers. Windows stores all Active Directory GPOs on a domain controller in a folder named Policies. Windows creates a policy folder for each domain. Computers in the domain retrieve the GPOs that apply to the computer when a user logs on using a domain account or a computer connects to the domain. Domain controller searches for the appropriate GPO and sends them to the computer. Every 90 to 120 minutes, domain controllers send a new or updated GPOs and remote computers and remote computers applies them. So it refreshes every 60, 90 to 120 minutes. So here we have the policies folder and you have the computer, they call it machine and user. So the user settings or, or the computer settings. So once you create one here, the HQOU, link an existing GPO. So you have an organizational unit here. Organizational units are basically like a subset of a domain where you can break it down and apply policies just to the OU so you don't have to apply to the whole domain. It helps give you better control over your organization. So you have the HQOU, you right mouse click it and say link to existing GP, link an existing GPO and you choose one. I wanna apply the password GPO to just them. Designing deployment and tracking GPO controls, the application order, and I kind of touched on it earlier, security filterings, and GPT management instrumental WMI filters. Application order. So that's where it's the LSDOU, local site domain OU. Security filters is where you can remove who's allowed to read it and add the people who you want to read it and remove everybody else. So those, they will be the only people allowed to read that policy. And WMI filters is where you can filter what machines get this. I want only Windows 8 machines with 500 gig hard drives to get this. I only want Windows 8 machines with a terabyte hard drive that are 32-bit OSs to get this. And you can actually break it down quite Um, intricately. Recall the Windows GPOs in the order, local, site GPOs defined in Active Directory, domain GPOs, and organizational unit GPOs. Design GPOs with that this order in mind because Windows applies OU's organizational unit GPOs last. Any global GPO settings should go there. So. Identify settings to enforce all computers and users. Define the GPO settings. Link the GPOs to the lowest level container. Ensure OU structure realistically represents the functional organizational structure. You can do this, <coughs> excuse me, with, it can be a, like an organizational chart. It can be geographic. You decide, but then you got to live with what you decide. OUs design the closely represent functional structure, make it easier to create appropriate OU level GPOs that satisfy, satisfy security policies. Security controls design start with security policies. Once you validate your OU design and identify controls, you'll need to satisfy your security policy. You can define the control scope. Security filters. Windows applies GPOs to computers and users in a container by default. Computers and users in an OU inherit OU GPOs defined for that OU by default. So all of it, you know, users and computers. Change the behavior with security filter if you want an OU GPO to apply only to some of the computers or users in that OU. And this is where we can basically add a user and remove the authenticated users. And only like in this case, Michael will get this GPO. You'll do that in your lab too. GPO Windows Management Instrumental Filters, WMI, the infrastructure Windows uses to maintain and exchange management and operation data. 
WMOI filters provides more control over when and where GPOs apply. You can create multiple WMI filters for each domain and then link each filter to one or more GPOs. But you can only link one WMI filter to each GPO. So you can have like a library of WMI filters, but you can only link one to a GPO at a time. And this is down here. WMI filters. And you would do this pull down menu after you created it. Deploying group policies, new and changed GPOs are distributed and applied every 90 to 120 minutes. Can force a GPO refresh in Windows Server 2012 and newer from within the group policy management console. Use the group policy manager update tool, provides the ability to force users log off or system boot when setting changes require these actions. So you can actually knock people off to log back on and then sometimes if it's a user setting, they have to log off and log back on to get these policies. Auditing and management with group policy. Group policy inventory, download from Microsoft. So the, the inventory tool you need to download from Microsoft provides an inventory list of the GPOs and other settings. Resultant set of policy. So you can actually that's included in Windows and shows what GPO settings apply to specific users on a specific computer. So this is if you'd like to test out your group policies you created before you implement them. Some best practices for Microsoft Windows group policy processes. Define OUs that reflect your organization's functional structure. Create OU GPOs for control required in your security policy. Use that as your baseline don't deviate from your security policy. You may need to update your security policy if it is weak. Use meaningful names for the GPOs to make the maintenance and administrative easier and troubleshooting. Deplo deploy GPOs in a test environment before deploying in your live environment to test them because they're very powerful and they could have some bad effects if you don't do this right. Use security filtering and WMI filters to restrict settings when necessary. Back up your GPOs regularly. And do not modify the default policies, instead create new GPOs. Because you can have really large bloated GPOs. Okay, thank you.